Hello, I'm Matthew Tesh, one of the co-founders of Heavy Robotics. In this video, I'll be discussing trajectories for robot motion and why thinking about how to get to your goal is important. The primary purpose of actuation and motion control is actually moving something. In this presentation, we'll go over a fundamental concept when controlling a robot that is easy to overlook. How do you get there? Boiling this down to a single phrase, what you should always keep in mind is to provide smooth control inputs to your system for best performance and stability. We will discuss the basic theory and reasoning behind this idea and show a few experiments that demonstrate the concept. As a baseline, let's start by ignoring this advice of smooth inputs. The simplest possible approach is to simply command the actuator to immediately step to the desired goal position. The commanded position over time will look like this. So here we'll set up a single link on the output of an actuator and test this step output with some simple code. Now, I will note we're logging commands and feedback from this experiment, and now we will go ahead and plot them. And you'll notice that the actuator does reach its destination, but there is oscillation and error. This also results in power spikes and mechanical wear on the elements of the system due to higher impulses. Because this is the simplest possible approach, and it does work to get to that goal, this is a common first approach when controlling a robot. As the system grows in complexity and the instability of the motion becomes a problem, one approach to reducing some of the transient error and improving stability is to wrap the commands in a simple PID or other feedback-based controller, which has the side effect of smoothing out the motion. This is certainly an important part of the entire puzzle when controlling the robot, but there are fundamental steps that should be taken before applying a PID controller to get more feasible commands to the system. So what do we mean by more feasible commands? Let's look at the step command in more detail. So let's plot the position over time, as well as the velocity. Now this makes the problem clear. We are asking the actuator to do something physically impossible. The step change in position requires an infinite velocity. Since actuators have maximum velocities in real life, we can construct a more feasible command trajectory by respecting that information. So here instead we use a period of linear position change, which results in a constant velocity over that. Now, this doesn't require much change in your code, but we do at least need the concept of a time for this motion to complete since it's no longer instantaneous. So running this on a physical system, and again, plotting the log data, this is definitely an improvement. Now, for many systems, this may be enough of an improvement and is still very easy to implement. The motion during the constant velocity portion of the trajectory is much smoother, although there is still some oscillation at the beginning and end of the motion. Let's look at this in more detail. As we noticed before, the position is much smoother and the velocity is now feasible. However, the acceleration is now infinite. Infinite accelerations require infinite torques, and so we are still left with a physical impossibility that we have requested from our system. To solve this, we could ramp the velocity signal as we did with the position signal. This is called a trapezoid of velocity profile and provides bounds on your acceleration. And we could even go further down this idea of smooth inputs. So you could investigate using polynomials and splines to create tra trajectories that reduce spikes in further derivatives as well. The math to generate these trajectories can be significantly more complex. Here we are using our wrapped up implementation of a minimum jerk trajectory common to the quad rotor community to demonstrate this on the physical system. Again, plotting the, the log data, you can see that this provides much better tracking and stability and a smoother motion overall. There are no big oscillations in, in the resulting motion. So overall, kind of the core concept to using trajectories is that you want to provide smooth inputs to your system. You want to provide inputs that provide for physically feasible motions of your system. This results in better performance. You get less energy, less force, less mechanical wear on your system, and it increases stability and requires less aggressive controller gains. Now, controller gains are still important to realize the motion. To get the errors during the transient times, you'll want to, to tune your PID gains or, or your controller gains but this becomes much easier to tune and more stable because your control inputs are better, and so you're not trying to fight that problem with your control in, your control gains. Now, although we just demonstrated on the joint trajectories here, 
This does apply to Cartesian position commands for robot arms, steering inputs for mobile robots, etc. So really, anytime you're inputting something into a physical system, you can think of trying to smooth that out with, with trajectory implementation. This is something we do a lot when composing more complex robot systems. And finally, when thinking about the full trajectory, using the velocity and acceleration to help command your system can further improve system performance. A lot of the error in that last plot where we saw a smooth trajectory was error during kind of the tracking of just position. If you're, you're able to feed forward velocity and acceleration commands, you're able to get even better uh, tracking there. So thank you for listening to our presentation on trajectories.